As seen through cameras and motion pictures, World War II is often seen only in black and white. But believe it or not, these majestic ships sailing through the big blue ocean were full of color due to the Navy's extensive use of camouflage. The intention of this video is to explore and show the different camouflage measures seen throughout the war on various ships and basically show the true colors of World War II. Before the war, ships were painted standard navy gray with different markings for visibility from the air. Battleships and cruisers had different color turret tops, destroyers had giant numbers painted on the sides of their hulls, and aircraft carriers even had their abbreviated names on one or both ends of the flight deck. Later, on Saratoga, a black stripe was painted on her funnel to tell her apart from her sister Lexington, and Yorktown had a big Y painted on her funnel to tell her apart from Enterprise. In 1936 and 1937, camouflage experiments were conducted using various schemes with the guidance of Charles Bittinger, who worked with the U.S. Navy on camouflage during World War I. The results of these experiments were detailed in the 1937 Bureau of Construction and Repair Handbook issued on December 30, 1937. And from this handbook, the Navy's 1941 camouflage doctrine was formed. With the war in Europe raging and Japan acting suspicious in the Pacific, the U.S. Navy decides to implement a camouflage system to reduce the overall visibility of its warships. Then, on February 20, 1941, Bureau of Ships releases Ships 2, which referenced a new set of standardized camouflage instructions. Ship camouflage means painting a ship for the purpose of producing effects of low visibility and of deception in course and range estimation. This video is only meant to show and explain the many different camouflage measures seen during World War II. Some ships depicted were repainted throughout the war in different measures depending on their location. The USS Enterprise alone was painted in five different measures throughout her career. Measure 1. Paint all vertical surfaces such as the sides of the hull, sides of superstructure, stacks, lower mass, etc. Dark gray, 5D. All vertical surfaces above the top of the stack shall be painted light gray, 5L. Measure 2. Paint all vertical surfaces above deck edge such as sides of deck houses, superstructure, stacks, masts, and pole masts light gray, 5L. Paint the sides of the hole with three bands, the upper band light gray, 5L, the middle band ocean gray, 5O, and the lower band dark gray, 5D. Measure 3. Paint all vertical surfaces such as sides of hull, sides of superstructure, stacks, masts, and pole mast, light gray, 5L. Measure 4. Paint all vertical surfaces such as sides of hull, sides of superstructure, stacks, masts, black formula, 82. All vertical surfaces above the top of the stacks shall be painted light gray, 5L. Measure 5. A painted false bow wave in combination of measures 1, 2, or 3 to give the impression of high speed at all times. Measures 6, 7, and 8 were designed to make ships resemble other ships by using paint alone, but no ship is known to have been painted in any of these measures except for one ship in 1943 using measure 8. Measure 8. Paint a New Orleans class cruiser to resemble a destroyer. Measure 9. Black system for submarines. Paint entire submarine black, Formula 82, including all parts visible from the air. In September 1941, Bureau of Ships releases Revision 1 of Ships 2, which redefines ship camouflage to mean painting a ship for the purpose of low visibility and of deception in course and range estimation. Low visibility secured by reduction of contrast with the background. Course estimation is rendered difficult by using dark colors which make shadows less conspicuous or by a pattern of confusing spots. With this revision, measures 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are rendered obsolete and creates new measures 11, 12, 13, and 14. Measure 11, all vertical surfaces from boot topping to top of superstructure masses, pole masts, yards, slender upper works, above level of top superstructure masses, C blue 5S. Horizontal surfaces, dark blue 20B. Measure 12, vertical surfaces from boot topping to level of main deck or highest shear line, continuous for full length on all vessels except carriers. On carriers, from water line to level of hangar deck, C blue 5S. Vertical surfaces above main deck to the level of the top of the highest superstructure masses, ocean gray 5O. Pole mass, yards, slender upper works above level of top superstructure masses, haze gray 5H. 
horizontal surfaces, dark blue 20B. Measure 12 modified, same as measure 12 but with irregular patches or splotches added to break up a ship's profile and cause confusion. Between November 4th and December 13th, 1941, the Atlantic Fleet replaced the whole color sea blue 5S with navy blue 5N. Measure 13, vertical surfaces from boot topping to top of superstructure masses, pole mass, yards, slender upper works, above level of top superstructure masses, haze gray 5H. Horizontal surfaces, deck blue, 20B. Measure 14. Vertical surfaces from boot topping to top of superstructure masses, ocean gray 5O. Pole mass, yards, slender upper works, above level of top superstructure masses, haze gray 5H. Horizontal surfaces, deck blue, 20B. In June 1942, Bureau of Ships releases Revision 2 of Ships 2 with new measures that focus on two general purposes, the reduction of visibility and course or range deception. Measure 10. Paint entire submarine above the waterline ocean gray 50, including all parts visible from the air. Measure 15. This was a short lived experimental scheme based on a British Admiralty disruptive scheme and possibly only applied to three ships. Measure 16. White with large polygonal patches of Thayer blue and was mostly useful in the Arctic. Measure 17, this pattern was only applied to three ships, and although similar, it has nothing to do with the later dazzle camouflage measures. Measure 18, similar pattern to measure 12, however, the break on the hull follows the shear of the hull and not the main deck, and uses ocean gray openworks instead of haze gray. Measure 21, all vertical surfaces, navy blue 5N, horizontal surfaces, deck blue 20B. Measure 22, paint the hull to the height of the main deck edge at the lowest point, navy blue 5N. All remaining vertical surfaces and all mounts and small gear, haze gray 5H. Horizontal surfaces, deck blue 20B. In March of 1943, Bureau of Ships releases another revision of Ships 2, which focuses on new dazzle paint schemes mainly to deceive submarines. Measure 31, dark pattern consisting of haze gray 5H, ocean gray 5O, and black. It emphasized mistaken identity and coarse deception. Measure 32, medium pattern consisting of light gray 5L, ocean gray 5O, and black, and was applied to most service ships in the Pacific during World War II. Measure 33, light pattern which varied in colors from ocean gray 5O, light gray 5L, and pale gray, to navy blue 5N, and haze gray 5H. In January 1945, Bureau of Ships revised the paint colors due to a shortage of blue pigments, thus eliminating the blue shades and creating five new colors. In February 1945, the Pacific Fleet's main threat was kamikaze, and all ships were ordered to be repainted in revised measures 12, 21, or 22. Please note, we don't actually know which ships were painted in these schemes, so the following images are for visual references only, and also my best guess. Measure 12 revised, apply a horizontal band of number 7 navy gray for the entire length of the hull from the boot topping to the height of the main deck at the lowest point. On carriers to the height of the hangar deck. Above this level apply number 17 ocean gray to vertical surfaces including superstructure stacks and masts. Horizontal surfaces, deck gray. Measure 21 revised, apply number 7 navy gray to all surfaces. Horizontal surfaces, deck gray. Measure 22 revised, apply a horizontal band of navy blue or navy gray if blue is not available to the hole for its entire length and extending from the boot topping to the height of the main deck at its lowest point. On carriers to the level of the hangar deck, apply haze gray to all vertical surfaces above that level. Horizontal surfaces, deck gray. On August 10, 1946, the U.S. Navy issued that all ships be repainted Measure 13, officially ending the use of camouflage. Measure 13, apply number 27 haze gray 5H to all external surfaces of the ship above the boot topping. Apply deck gray to steel decks and all other horizontal surfaces. Wood decks will also no longer be camouflaged. Flight decks on carriers will be stained with Formula 21 and submarine decks will be painted black. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. This is one video I really enjoyed doing and took a long time to prepare, which include building all the models myself, finding ships for each measure, and a lot of research. So thank you for watching and God bless. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and of course comments are always welcome. I taught myself how to build 3D models and figured this was the best way to display some of my models and show everybody the true colors of World War II.
Thank you so much.